Привет, it's Influx, and welcome back to level 25. This week, I'm joined by the Versus World Champion for 2021, Packy. Packy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's the holiday season. I haven't gotten any of my shopping done, but I have half of it planned so far, and I'm probably going to knock it all out this weekend. Other than that, it's just making lots of delicious food and just having a good time with friends and family. Awesome. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I'm I'm behind on my holiday shopping too. Tis the season. <laughs> we're profes- we're professional procrastinators here. <laughs> so, um I'm sure that a lot of our viewers are familiar with who you are, but would you mind giving us the rundown? Yes. I well, I'm I'm obviously I'm Packy 619. I I have won 3 versus world championships as well as a speed running runner up the previous year Mm -hmm. basically i've i've been familiar with dr mario pretty much ever since the day it came out but i never really got serious with it until 2015 well what happened in 2015 in 2015 nintendo decided to bring back the nintendo world championships oh and in order in order to determine who was going to compete in the finals they had 16 slots. Eight of them were invitees. Six of them were speedrunners, and two of them were basically YouTube celebrities. The other eight spots were determined by qualifiers held in eight different best buys scattered across the United States. War, one of them was in, was in uh, Schaumburg, Illinois, and that was the qualifier that Chris Bidwell won and ended up going to the finals. He yeah. actually beat out uh, Mike Iorossi who was also competing there, and um, he was actually the 1994 Nintendo World Champion. Wow. Yeah, so he had, so he had some comp- serious competition there. My qualifier was in Torrance, California. It was probably the toughest of the competitions simply because of its location, because there's a lot of people in California. Mm. And one of the first people in line there was Vince Clemente, a name you might recognize if you're familiar with the CTWC. He is one of its lead producers. Classic Vobs. Yep, that's him. So for those unfamiliar with the 2015 Nintendo World Championships, I'm ju- I'm, I'm just going to give you a rundown of the qualifiers. I'm not going to go into the whole tournament. Sure. But there was a game released for the Wii, the Nintendo Wii U called NES Remix 2, and it was released as Ultimate NES Remix on the Nintendo 3DS. And on it was a championship mode. Now, if you remember the original 1990 Nintendo World Championships, it was a 6-minute, 21-second gauntlet of Mario 1, Rad Racer, and Tetris. In 2015, we played Ultimate NES Remix on the 3DS and played Championship Mode. And it is a 6 minute 21 run that's pretty similar, only the games are slightly different. The first game you play is Mario 1 where you have to get 50 coins. The second game is Mario 3 where you have to get 25 coins. And the last most important game with a 100 times score multiplier is Dr. Mario. Whoa. They, they they put you on level zero on medium speed, and with the time you have left, you just have to rack up as many points as you possibly can. That's really interesting. This was the qualifying game for the 2015 Nintendo World Championships. Vince got a score of 5 million points early in the day. And at that point, it was the highest score in the country by miles. Mm-hmm. I played a half an hour later and I got a 5.4. <laughs> Man, congratulations. Thank you. That was the beginning of my competitive gaming life. That was actually the first legit tournament I had ever been in. And how did it feel? When I had the 5.4 million, I was kind of beside myself because like, what ha- my run wasn't really that great until I got to level 3. Because on... On medium speed, and I, I really wasn't getting a whole lot of giant combos going, mm. but I had maybe 26,000 points or so going into level 3, and with the multiplier, that's 2.6 million. 
Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe this just isn't my day, but let's just score out and just do the best I can and see what happens. I'm start the pieces are starting to fall in place immediately for me and I can just see everything that needs to happen. Yeah. So I'm throwing pills down. I've got pretty much everything set up, but I really need two more pills to really maximize this chain. Unfortunately, anyone who's familiar with Dr. Mario RNG does not expect these pills to appear because the first one I need is a double blue. Oh no. <laughs> and the second one I need is a double yellow. And I need them in that order. So I throw down a couple of pieces, and then I see the double blue come in. I'm like, okay. And as soon as the double blue gets thrown into the bottle, I see the next piece as a double yellow. <laughs> oh my chained, goodness. Yeah, I chained eight viruses, and my score shot up to 52,000, and I immediately started shaking. And I, had to, and I had to force myself to stop shaking because I still had 30 seconds left. <laughs> Because it's like, okay, let's just get out of this level and just kill a few more viruses and just get out of here. Yeah. And, by the way, that San Diego shirt was the shirt I wore to that qualifier. Oh, so does... So it does have some sentimental value to it as well. And yeah. It, and now you have it in your Twitch profile picture as, a, like, a permanent reminder. Yeah. That, yeah that's, that's, that's the shirt I wore to that qualifier, even though... The shirt I typically wear to competitions now is the is the let's settle this like adults shirt. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was my qualifier. And I I basically like lingered around Best Buy for a while. But at the same time I was like, do I really want to hang out at Best Buy for several hours <laughs> waiting for this thing to end just to see if I hang on for dear life? <laughs> because Originally, Nintendo also said we could not do replays. We only get one shot. Mm. So, eventually I just left and had lunch with a friend, and then I finally decided to make the two-hour drive home. And it's like, whatever happens, happens. Let's just see what happens. And then, about an hour after I got home, my phone rang, and I saw a 562 area code. I don't know anybody with a 562 area code. <laughs> So I know exactly who it is. I'm like, oh my god, this is really happening. Were they trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no. Yeah, it was um, It was the Best Buy people calling me saying that nobody beat my score. And that I won a trip to Los Angeles. That is really <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, w I, I was losing my mind when I got that phone call. <laughs> So since then, um, I I know that you play a lot of different NES games and um, yeah. have competed in a, a few different championships, but uh, you spend a good deal of time on Dr. Mario, and you've, at least in my mind, you've been one of the like gold standards of the game for a long time, um, the person that everyone's comparing against. Um, like you said, three-time world champion. We just finished the uh, 2021 speedrun world championship uh mm -hmm. it's just been a crazy month uh with this uh championship and i'm curious how you think that it stacks up against the one that you competed in last year well first of all let me congratulate you for winning the championship thank I, you i really thought that you were probably the only guy who could actually beat frank and you really did an, an incredible job so congratulations man thank you so much that being said, the field has gotten so much stronger, and any given day you can get beat. I yeah. Mean, we all know that RNG plays a big factor in whether or not you can actually win sometimes, because if one guy gets a terrific board and one guy gets a horrible board, then that can swing a match very quickly. And that's not like an indictment on either player. I mean... Sometimes that's life. You just got to do the best you can with what you've been dealt. Yeah. But because like I know DM hero and that guy is just an incredible competitor in versus and speed run alike. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that you were one of the last year's finalists. And then this year, um, DM hero eliminated you in round two. Um, also throughout the year, you had won the uh, 
mo- monthly tournaments, you had at least one tournament win. Um, th- there were four players who had tournament wins um, throughout the months going into this championship, and um, well, obviously in the end they all got eliminated. But by three different people, DM Hero eliminated you, having no tournament wins. Leviticus mm-hmm. eliminated Floyd, and I eliminated Dimwit and uh, Frank. Uh, like you said, the field is just getting so much stronger. Well, let me put it this way, because this makes a lot of sense in my mind. It's not necessarily who you play, it's when you play them. Mm-hmm. If you played Dimwit eight months ago, you probably wouldn't beat him, because now you are a much better player than you were eight months ago. Exactly. That's what it is. Like you have ascended very, very high upon the mountain. I, uh... Still feel, and th- this might have something to do with the fact that I frequently devalue my own accomplishments, but it yeah. feels almost phony to call me the speedrun world champion, just because going into this tournament, there were players who had performed so much better than I did throughout the year, but at the same time, like that gave them a better seed, that gave them uh, somewhat of an advantage, but in the end... Part of the beauty of this, the way this competition is structured is like anyone can take it in the end. And like you yeah. said, it all comes down to this last month and uh, DM Hero didn't have any wins. He didn't make it to the finals through the rest of the year, but uh, he knew he had a shot. And so that probably uh, was extra motivation for him when uh, going into the match against you. Yeah, and I think I think that's a, a r- very good thing to have that kind of parity in this tournament. Yeah, it's like it, you can't have the same people winning every single time, and you can't determine who the speedrun world champion is just by looking at speedrun.com and seeing who has the fastest time. You got you got to do it live, and you got to be ready to do it whenever you need to do it. We've talked about the field growing stronger. All these players are improving individually, but I'm also curious. Um, do you think that the game itself is changing the way that we play it? That's a good question. I the th- the thing is, it's like I don't feel like I've changed the way I play Doctor Mario a whole lot, mm. but I'm 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 kind of reputed as like an aggressive kind of player, just the kind of just because of the way I play versus for the most part. But I feel like people are very have grown a lot more conscious of drop time as well as quick like T clears and whatnot. Yeah. I, I I feel like it's it's slowly changing. I think I think the next step is that they're gonna see like say say like some of the horizontal bridge drops that you and Frank do so often. I think the next step to that is when you're not getting the right piece to trigger that to just keep building on top of what you've already built so you can clear more even further underneath the layer that you've already prepared for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what Frank does too. He just builds these yeah. skyscrapers that come crashing down yeah. on these viruses. Yeah, that's that. That's really. If there's one thing that I can pick up from players like Frank and Inari, and now yourself, it's to gain that level of perception. Yeah, they. We talk about that vision, and it's a def, definitely a tough thing to acquire. Um, I think it just comes more naturally to some players, but definitely uh, a skill that can be trained over time. Yeah, I don't know if you are familiar with the Wayback Machine. Um, it's this website. I don't know exactly all the details about it, but basically it takes a snapshot of various web pages throughout the year so that you can kind of look back at a website and see what it was like in 2018 and stuff. So um, hmm. I was able to see the 2018 speedrun.com leaderboard for Dr. Mario and it mm. was just so so interesting i think a uh, serious producer heather had the world record for 0 to 10 with a 1242 i believe and then you were I second think i remember that second was you with a 1310 
and you know they haven't patched this game <laughs> not no. for not for the nes so all the mechanics that we're playing with are the same as they were back then but like these clears like fat logs and sweet teas they're very mm. good efficient clears lightning bolts and i think the f fact that we've like given names to them mm -hmm. uh helps us all be more aware and i think it's just kind of evolved our gameplay as a community i mean because a lightning bolt is tough to spot if you're a new player you wouldn't necessarily see those moves independently but we have a name for it and so it becomes quickly recognizable um and easier yeah. to see in your own gameplay and honestly that's kind of the point of things like commentary and creating these new terms it's it's to kind of shed light on these techniques and make them more digestible to people who don't necessarily or aren't necessarily familiar with them and i think that's really cool yeah so the 2021 championship is wrapped up um mm -hmm. i feel very fortunate to have a title under my belt but uh i think that next year uh, you know, who who knows what it's going to be like a year from now. I was a newcomer. Frank was a newcomer to the scene as well. Um, yeah. And next year, there might... The player who ends up taking the championship at the end of the year might not even be in the community yet. This is very true. And I, I will I will tell you this, because this, this is also something that I talked with Joseph Saley about in uh, 2019 after he won his second uh, CTWC. Defending the mountaintop is a lot different from climbing to the mountaintop. Yeah. But believe me, I wish, I wish you the best of luck. Well, thank in you. In doing so. Yeah. I, uh... I'm sure that you are very familiar with people rooting against you at the top of the mountain. <laughs> well, I don't really feel necessarily like I was rooted against, but the rooting for my opponent might have seemed a bit louder. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't feel like people necessarily hated me. I just think that people li really liked the idea of someone pulling, pu defeating me and pulling off a huge upset. And I'm perfectly fine with that because I get it. That's a great perspective to take, too. It's not that they're rooting against you. They're just rooting for your opponent. Yeah, no one exactly. Wants, especially in this community, no one wants, uh, you know, players to fail and top out. Like, that's just not fun to watch and stuff, but... Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm honestly perfectly fine with that. Because, like, there, there is some psychology involved with defending a championship, because, like, I know that not everybody who listens to these is necessarily a sports fan, but just as like a comparison, I there there's this series by NFL Films called America's Game, and they basically take like these the Super Bowl winning teams, and they take like three members of each team and just do a bunch of interviews and have them tell their stories about that year. Yeah. The nineteen ninety eight Broncos were one of those teams, and. Their tight, their Hall of Fame tight end Shannon Sharp was one of the people that they interviewed, one of the greatest trash talkers in NFL history, by the way. Okay, <laughs> but he also mentioned because like the 1997 Broncos won the Super Bowl, so the 1998 Broncos, Shannon Sharp at one point basically said, "Look, once you have won that trophy, there's nothing else. You have to look. You can only look at the season one way." And that is if you're not if you're not holding the Vince Lombardi trophy at the end of the season, the confetti is not dropping on you and it's and they're not playing We Are the Champions by Queen for you, <laughs> then the season is a failure. Mm. There is an undeniable feel, feeling of that. And on the other side, when you are defending a title, you have you have to convince yourself sometimes that you're not the best. Because you have to have a healthy amount of motivation to continue to improve your craft. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope that doesn't sound like too negative or anything because I'm not trying to be down on you or anything. It's just the the year two of a championship run is is a lot more of an odyssey. And it's a pretty unique challenge to deal with. You know what I mean? I've never 
had any experience like this for sure um yeah this is my first competitive gaming endeavor with this dr mario community and obviously my first title and I, it's weird to say that i'm defending it um because i feel like my story was a bit of an underdog victory against frank uh but i it is it is true i mean you you did a great job man you really climbed really far in a eight months man you you've done an incredible job thank you i that compliment could means the most coming from you i have to say you are the person who i fan the most over for sure i've embarrassed myself in front of plenty of people talking about how great you are <laughs> I, I very much appreciate that man so uh I, I don't know if you're adapting your gameplay or if you're just spending more time with it you, we, we all know that dr mario has a lot of randomness and mm -hmm. to some extent the players who have the better speedrun.com times um have just been able to spend more time playing the game mm -hmm. um but you recently submitted a an official recorded pb of 1158 joining the sub 12 club yep do you have any more goals for you know the we're wrapping up 2021 anything that you're trying to cram in before the end of december if there's anything I want to cram in before the year's over, it's to get a sub 38 0 through 20. Mm. It's nonsense that I haven't gotten one recorded yet. Okay, but <laughs> why did you stop your 0 to 10 when you got 1158? I didn't I don't get it. <laughs> this is very true. I mean, honestly, I, I I hear you say that and I hear that in my head all the time because like the I I whenever I speedrun Dr. Mario, it's always been 0 through 20. Because it's like, if I get a grade 0 through 10, it's like, oh, well, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't even have 0 to 10 splits. I did, like, two runs of 0 to 10, and I'm like, why don't I just make a 0 to 20 split, and then I can continue if I want? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, man, I, I watched your video, and when you stopped and we're celebrating after the 0 to 10, uh, I was curious what was going on there, because your 0 to 20 definitely with with a 12 minute zero to 10 could be a lot stronger yeah i my i know i i mean my zero my zero through 10 in my zero through 20 pb i think it was still like a low 12 mm -hmm. i really feel like it's in the later levels that i gotta improve my game because i'm i look at i look at the times i've gotten in the dmm finals when i've been in it and it really doesn't seem to compare <laughs> to the times I've mm. been seeing lately. Yeah. And that's interesting too, because your six through nine PB in the Dr. Mario monthly is the second best, I believe, unless, unless it got trounced again by another Frank, but, uh, with a five, I have to double check. I don't know. <laughs> like five and a half minutes. That's just crazy pace yeah. for, for that level block. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe some practice in the later levels. I feel like that's the thing, though. It's like everyone could do a little bit better in the later levels. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're in the later levels long enough. It's it's going to... RNG is going to bite you eventually, but just because you're there for a longer time period of time, I guess. But yeah, I I figure there's got to be a more efficient way to play them than the way I've been playing them. I feel like you've adapted your style a little bit to think of efficiency more. From what I saw of you when I like first started getting involved with Doctor Mario, I saw a lot of clears where like. You would take a double red and you would stack it vertically on top of a, a red virus to just mm -hmm. clear it and have no drop time. But yeah. there was one play in your PB and the people watching can go check it out. Mm -hmm. But you make you have a double red, you have two red viruses, and you make a red lightning bolt out of it, which is just like, I wasn't expecting you to go for that play. And so seeing you do that, I, I definitely felt like you were um, almost adapting your style a little bit to, to uh, 
you know, not keep up. I don't want to say keep up because anyone who's getting a five and a half minute six through nine is clearly doing push something it further right. Than, but yeah, yeah. I guess I'm, like, I'm, I'm I'm always trying to find ways to improve, and I I honestly could probably do with practicing Doctor Mario a little more than I normally do. I mean, I obviously there's the weekly checkups every week. Yeah. But aside from that and the Dr. Mario monthlies and the qualifiers, I don't practice a whole lot cause, just because, like, I love Dr. Mario, don't get me wrong. I've just got so many games in this in this room to play, you know? <laughs> yeah. I definitely benefit from, uh, well, I don't know. I just don't enjoy playing very many games. Dr. Mario is, like, one of three video games that I like to play. And so there's not a bunch of different games vying for my time as much. Yeah. I mean, there there was a point, I think, it, I think when I was in high school, where I just liked to play puzzle games practically all the time. Yeah. There's something very satisfying about the, just the puzzle solving-ness of it. I, mean, I, th I think back then, though, I was playing uh, Kirby's Avalanche and Tetris Attack and Wario's Woods. So... One last thing that I'm uh, excited about, and I don't want Swong to feel pressure because I'm bringing this up on the podcast, but okay. uh, he's been mentioning the a potential organized something or other whereby um, players can be mentored by other players in the community. The, the underlying idea is that there are a lot of players who are... Um, brand new to the game or they're coming over i saw someone in the discord pop in and say hey i think i'm pretty good at this game i, I thought i'd join the community and yeah a player like that um neighborhood good you know uh yeah. pro probably has a lot of the necessary skills to be competent but could mm -hmm. be pushed a little bit further by someone like you, me, someone else like <laughs> anyone in the gold bracket and most of the people in the silver uh, who could just provide a little bit more direction and uh, critique yeah. of the, their gameplay and help them improve. Would you want to do something like that? It does sound pretty interesting. I mean, my my biggest issue is just finding time. Mm. But I like Swang's idea. Maybe have like a channel where like people can like do a deeper dive into someone's run if they want to ask like, what could I, how could I be doing this better? Because, like, kind of like Jonas used to do sub evals, where basically one of his subscribers could submit a game of Tetris and he could, he could, he would crack it open on his stream and do a deeper dive and just kind of point out moves that they could have made instead of the moves they did make. Mm -hmm. Like, you could have put this T block here and set up a, set up an ice spin here if you really want to or something to that effect <laughs> i think that uh yeah a, a program where players could be paired up um could be very useful because i think that um a lot of players have difficulty asking for help and a lot of players um don't want to overstep their boundaries and offer <laughs> help unsolicited uh, it could just help with the social aspect of everything, and definitely with a community building aspect as well. Yeah, pairing people up might work. I mean, if as long as you as long as you've got the time to do it, then that should work fine. Yeah, I I forget that a time commitment is even a consideration for for most normal people. Because almost yeah. all my life is just Dr. Mario right now. I'm very infatuated <laughs> with the game. I think that's uh, awesome, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining me on the pat podcast, Packy. It's been absolutely wonderful talking to you. Thank you for having me. Because, like, I'm I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually I'm actually a little surprised that you decided to put me on the podcast. Because, like, I've seen this podcast as like an opportunity for lesser known players to get some spotlight on them and talk about their experiences with the game and everything like that. Mm. Cause like most people know who I am already, but I hope that this conversation has brought 
into light some unique things that you might not have known before. And that doesn't just go for you in Flux. That's also go, goes for everybody who's listening. Because, like, my experience in the Dr. Mario tournaments this year has been, like, I'm always disappointed when RNG decides that it's time for me to lose <laughs> or what have you, but I'm starting to get my feet wet on commentary and I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. And it's it's been really cool watching watching you guys and you in particular improve your game to such a high level. It's been a treat to watch. Thank you. Well, I've been wanting to have you on for a long time. Uh, just the timing felt right this week. It's not just about highlighting um, some of the lesser known players. I think there are a lot of people out there who uh, just want to get to know everyone a little bit better. And yeah. I mean, I, I knew nothing about the Nint Nintendo World Championships and now I know. So yeah. But thank you all at home for listening in as well. Um, as always, until next week. In Dr. Mario and in life, bless RNG. Bless RNG.